Where's your operator's license? Uh, uh, What's your name? Pasquale Francesco Giuseppe Scavona, a vostro servizio, signore mio, non ha già fatto niente male. Andavo a casa a trovare un piccino mio. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you talking now or is that still your name? No, 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 I don't still, ma andavo a piccino mio. Ma non ho What's the big idea? I don't mean to make any mistake. You get his name? Not yet. You get it. Well, I'll get it, all right. What's your name? Antonio Pasquale Francesco Schiamola, a vostro servizio. Signore mio, non ho già fatto niente di male. Oh, veramente, sono poco guaglione. Andavo a casa, con la moglie mia, portarsi lo quattro soldi a questi poveri piccirelli. I don't mean to make anything wrong. I sell the lady a banana. I use the phone. I call up the house. Oh, Pavese Immacolata, my Maria, she has a baby. Oh, your wife's having a baby. No, not one baby. I sell the lady the orange. I use the phone. I call up the house, but don't be something no purgatorio. It is a good baby. I sell the lady a great Now, wait, wait. You're going too far. I go too far? My Maria go too far. I use the phone. I call up the house. Oh, per tutti i santi, la santa concessione, la vergine mia. It is three day, baby. Me? No telephone no more. Well, I don't blame you. I take the car. I put on the gate. I go to the house to say, Maria, please, in the name of all saints, no more, babe. I don't mean to make a mistake, Mr. Capitano. I know you didn't, but you did. What do you say, Sandy? He ought to get a medal, not a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. We're going to let you go this time. Oh, grazie. Grazie, signori miei. In the name of the Madonna di tutti i santi che benedica voi, vostra figlia e tutti quanti. Thank you, signori. Io, Susquale, Francesco, Giuseppe, Scavona, vostro servizio. I hate to think what his Marie's been doing while we stood here talking. <laughs> Some more of the babe. <laughs> the poor devil. <laughs> <laughs> say, how about some chow? Her nibs is expecting you. Did she say so? She didn't say so. She gave orders. Well, in that case, okay. <laughs> having dinner here. Well, you ought to know. <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> he got you that time. <laughs> Come on, and her nibs will be fussy. Okay. back to school? I don't know. Well, ask your dad. You ask him. Well, gee, why should I ask him? He's your dad, isn't he? Say, Sammy. Yeah? If Graham asked him, maybe they would. Sure. Come on. Too late. 
I'm starved to death. You haven't been here for two days. Well, gee, honey, I have to work, you know. Oh, you'll ruin your stomachs. Eating in those lunch rooms. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> now go on. Hurry up and wash. Everything's hot. All right, Mark. Come on, Mary. Well, nothing doing. It's against the regulations. How did she know? I don't know. Can we help you, Graham? I'll carry this in, Mrs. Malone. And I'll carry this. Perhaps you boys would like to come home after school and wash the dishes. Well, Graham, it's like this. I have some studying to do at school, and if I could get back early, I... Uh, you mean fast, like on a motorcycle. Go on. Go on in there, both of you. Go on. <laughs> oh, boy. There seems to be a lot of industry among the small fry. <laughs> you don't think they want to ride back to school, do you? Oh, no, nothing like that. <laughs> Anything else, Graham? No, no, no. Now you two boys sit down there. Go on. Now you sit down. Oh, I'll sit be down? there in a minute. You want me to carry you in there? It might be nice. Oh, what are you little boy? Oh. Oh. I get you. Oh. 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 There you are. Oh, my. Oh. Now then, you stay put. Uncle <laughs> oh. Tom, give me a plate, Tom. Thanks. Have some potatoes, Uncle Tom? Oh, thanks, buddy. Oh, I'll take a lot of them. Oh, all right, I will. Yeah, Sandy. You know, it's too bad that we have to go back to the station after dinner. Yeah. Otherwise, we could ride the kids back to school. That's right.
no foul. Hey! Go ahead and run. Take this man to the nearest hospital. Just, buddy, he has to have those to get well. But he's hurt, and I don't want him to be hurt. I don't want him to be hurt. Captain Reed wants to talk to you, buddy, about joining the force. Don't you, Captain? You bet. <laughs> Here's Tom Sandy. I'm kind of messed up. Yeah? Why don't you learn how to ride a motorcycle? I'll take some lessons from you when I get up. Did you get that guy? You bet I got him. Well, what do you think I've been doing all this time? Dating up the girl he had with him, for all I know. Sure, I dated her. For you. Why, she's waiting for you now at the jail. That's my tough luck, huh? I can't keep that date. He crashed me deliberately, Tom. Deliberately? Yeah. I don't know.
Where's your nibs? Here I am, Sandy. You're not to cry, honey. That's a sweet hand. So many things I haven't time to tell you. I know them all, Sandy. I know them all. Tell. <laughs> Maria, in the name of the saints, no more of the babe. <laughs> You mistress out of jail yet? Miss Dane is in the library. Then I take it she is out of jail. Is the judge with her? The judge is out of town. Oops. Well, there'll be fun when he gets home. Oh, Rogers. <clears throat> yes, miss? There's a better account of it in the news. That O implies relief on seeing me, so I'm flattered. Well, you made the front page again. Don't talk about it. It's terrible. Where were you going in such a crying hurry? To be married? You're kidding me. Certainly not. What did you think I was doing with my bags in the car? Well, that's what a lot of people are wondering. And frankly, at 8 o'clock this evening, the odds were 5 to 1 against marriage. You mean people are talking about me? Well, for heaven's sake, what else did you expect? Blake's one of the most notorious... Oh, well, what's the use? I know what he is. Now. If that officer dies, I'll kill myself. Why don't you stop thinking in headlines for a while? Judge Dane's daughter elopes. Judge Dane's daughter commits suicide. If I didn't like you so well, I'd be sick to death of your name. Where are you going? To get a drink. Rogers will get it for you. Well, I wouldn't think of disturbing him. He's having too much fun reading about you. Have you been reading about me? Certainly not, Miss. Don't lie. What do you want? There's an officer at the door, Miss, asking for you. Tell him I'm not in. I've already informed him that you are here. Why did you do that? You've just cautioned me against lying. All right. Send him in. Rogers. Yes, sir. Stay close to the door. Indeed, I will, Miss. Is 
he dead? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, pardon me. Did he have a family? His family will be taken care of. I... I haven't any official right to question you, but... How did it happen? Mr. Blake made a statement to the police. I was so frightened at the time I... I don't remember clearly. The officer was just a short distance behind us when I saw a, a boulder to the left of us. Mr. Blake swerved quickly to miss it and I looked back just in time to see the officer strike it. Neither of us had any idea he was hurt. We thought it was just a spill. There'll be a coroner's inquest. Sandy's dead. He can't tell his story. But you can. Now, is that the story you're going to tell? Five grand. If we're lucky. Will the charming Miss Dane stick to her story? Sure she'll stick. She's scared to death. Don't you admire the timid type of woman? She's such a help to you when you get in a tight spot. The evidence of Police Officer Burke is that you were doing 70 miles an hour at the time of the accident. Is that right, Mr. Blake? Yes. I admit I had no business speeding. But that's a weakness we all have. You confine yourself to answering only the questions put to you. Did you see uh, Officer Malone's motorcycle strike the rock? No, I did not. That's all. You may step down. Miss Dane, take the stand, please. Miss Dane is unable to attend. I have an affidavit from her physician. She is confined to a bed due to a nervous collapse. She made a statement to the police, however. I believe Captain Brown has it. Read the statement of the jury. <clears throat> this statement duly sworn to by Doris Dane. The first question put to the witness reads, did you witness the crash that killed Officer Malone? Answer, yes. Question, what caused the crash? Answer, his motorcycle collided with a boulder. That's a lie. They crashed him deliberately. Sandy told me so. I tell you, he killed him, deliberately. Tom, dear, please. You'll observe the dignity of this hearing or leave the room. Then I'll leave. Dignity? It's a farce. Nothing but a lot of lies from a cheap gambler and his shyster lawyer. Tom. See that Officer Burke waits in the ante room until he is called. with the statement of the witness. Question. 
After the accident, did you stop and render aid? Joe, call up and see if they've reached a verdict. Oh, do your own telephoning. Oh. Where's my daughter? In her room, sir. It's my father. I'll be seeing you. Oh, don't. Oh, don't be funny. I got enough of this at home. Oh, hello, Judge. Hello, John. I'm just leaving. Hope you had a pleasant trip. Hello, Father. You got back sooner than I expected. Have a nice trip. A splendid trip, thanks to the newspapers. Have you seen the evening paper? No. I'd like for you to study the pictures on page two. I said page two, Doris. you tell the truth about the accident? Yes. Sure, she'll see you. Granny will see anybody. Are you Officer Malone's little boy? I'm not no more. You shouldn't ask him that. He don't like to talk about his dad. Makes him cry. His dad got killed. Yes, I know. It's all right. It's all right. What's the matter?
Maybe you better see the lady, Graham. She's gone. Who was she? Oh, that ding girl. Do you know her, Uncle Tom? No. Well, she sure had a swell car. Say, buddy, Sammy's waiting for you. He's got a bad cold, too. Oh, nothing much. I've just been called on the carpet for losing my temper. Now they're putting me out in the sticks to cool off. Get me Judge Dane, criminal courts building. Do you realize that you have confessed to perjury? Yes. Hello, Judge Dane, Chief Kramer. Could you come over to my office? Your daughter is here. He hung up. He probably thinks I'm in another jam. I am inclined to think that you are. Yes. I guess I am. Well, why the broad smile? I just found out that I like my daughter. Would be too bad if she had to go to jail just when you're getting fond of her. You're not kidding me. No, the world would convict her. She committed perjury. Cut, cut. I'll have to talk to her about that. Anybody else guilty of anything? Yes. Something there doesn't seem to be any law to cover. Well-oiled palms. In the department? No, sir. Outside. They've got me tied hand and foot. If I reopen this Malone case, it'll blow the lid off things. It's dynamite. Well, a little dynamite in the right places might be a good thing. Even if it lands your daughter in jail along with the others? I'll lay ten to one. She won't go. What does interest me is whether or not she realized what she was facing when she made the confession. She not only realized it, she seemed willing to go through with it. She saw Malone's mother and kid and got sentimental. You can call it sentiment, but I don't mind telling you that I'm proud of her. And if she wants to go through with it, I'll back her up. And if she goes to jail, by golly, I'll go with her. Ever hear of Trixie Debray? I'm not deaf. She's behind this. Personally, I'd give anything to see her behind the bars, and I'd make a special trip to the morgue to see that guy Blake laid out on a slab. I can't reopen this Malone case. The boss is... Now, if I had your job, I'd resign. And if your daughter were my daughter, I'd keep still. All right, I'll keep still. Do you mean it? Sure. A man is usually still when he gets into action. Meaning what? I'm getting into action regardless of higher up. Well, it'll probably cost me my job. But if you need any help, let me know. Well, I guess I'll be getting back to the house. 
Hey, a uh, right smart bit of traffic through here last 4th of July. They had the main road there closed. Well, that's encouraging. another dumb woman driver. Is she hurt? I don't know. It wasn't my fault. I know it. Why don't you watch where you're going? Why can't you be kind? I tried to explain the other day. I saw Mrs. Malone. She doesn't hate me anymore. Neither does Buddy. But you won't even let me tell you what I did. There isn't anything that you could do. I tried to. I went to see the chief of police. I told him the truth. What was the truth? I lied. He did it deliberately. I'll get your car out for you. Who did what deliberately? He'll never forgive me. What did you do? Nothing. Maybe that's it. Listen, don't be so hard to get. Dames don't realize a guy gets tired of nothing after a while. What are you going to do? What has the chief done? Nothing. And you told him that Blake did it deliberately? See me? Yes. Hurt you to say, sir? Yes. Until I find out what you've done about the evidence Miss Dane brought you. Now you know that Blake deliberately murdered Sandy Malone. What have you done about it? You better sit down over there and cool off. 
fool off. That's all I've been doing. They sent me out the sticks, but they made a mistake. I'm going to kill Blake. That's fine. I like to hear a cop talk like that. I'm not a cop. I'm through. You want to hand over your badge now? Yes. Thirteen, huh? <laughs> Lucky number. Lucky? My best friend is deliberately murdered. And when I lawfully try to get the guy who did it, I'm sent out to the sticks. Demoted. <laughs> I'll say it's lucky. Doesn't it beat the devil how a man can become attached to a place? What do you mean? Nothing. You got a soup and fish? A what? A tuxedo. Well, I have what used to be one. And get yourself a new one. I'll charge it to the department. <laughs> That'll be funny. I don't get you. What am I to do? You're stepping out tonight. When an ordinary copper is willing to quit the force on a certain principle, the same principle ought to be good enough for the chief. I'm losing my job. But I'm going to take care of a couple of things before I get through. Be here at nine tonight. Yes, sir. And uh, give this another chance. It might turn out to be lucky. All right, sir. Thank you. You go through this door, down the stairs, into the main gambling room. Now, over here is the bar. Where does this lead to? That leads into the dice and poker room. And this? This is the door leading into Trixie DuBray's private office. It's on the top floor of the building. Oh, Mr. Billings. You're very clever. You should have been a broadcaster. I wish you'd die or something. Oh, Pete. Now, uh, where's Burke? Oh, love is coming into his life in an alcove. Shall I stop it? You bet. Love can wait. Oh, how callous. How romantic. Uh, what about this passage here? This I know nothing about. I wish I were in on this tonight. They'd recognize you. Won't he know you? Well, I'm keeping out of his way for a while. You'll be careful, won't you? Sure. <clears throat> I don't know where the chief got his information, but he says that love can wait. So you're wanted, Mr. Burke. There's a dame in there I'd like to throttle before this evening's over. Who is she? The Laws Doe, the heartbreak girl. Thanks. And this is Mr. Billings, Burke. He's getting you in tonight. How do you do, Mr. Burke? I'm very glad to know you. Same to you, thank you. Oh, Mr. Burke, I think your devotion to your friend was simply beautiful. Why don't you go home? He's given us a plan of the gambling house. Oh. Come in. Several gentlemen to see you, sir. Send them in. Gosh. No cracks. You boys all knew Sandy Malone? You bet. We know now that he was deliberately killed. And I thought you boys might like to get the guy who killed him. I've got orders to lay off of a certain gambling joint, Trixie DeBrays. It was her dough that got Blake off. And it's her joint we're going to close if we all lose our jobs doing it. Anyone want to back out? That's a silly question. Brown. Sorry, sir. I meant it's all right with me. Now, here's the layout. I 
Aren't you coming over? Presently. Yes? Pete Billings of the News with a party of four. What do they look like? Yo. Let them in. I'll be right over. the Danes. But what's it worth to you to find out something? About the cop you killed. Miss, yes. somebody rang up to say your father had been hurt. What? Where is he? They rang off. It's an address in Akia Street. You get your coat. I'll get out the car and take you there. All right.
your bag, Rogers. Oh! I'll settle with you later. You'll settle with me first. Unload your pockets and make it snappy. with the first platter now. They certainly are. <laughs> Why don't you pick it up? That's an idea. You know, I have a swimming pool. All of your own? Yep. Well, uh, did you have anything special in mind when you told us that? Maybe. Oh, Lord, oh, 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 no, it's such a pleasure to have you here for dinner. swimming pool. Uncle Tom can marry her. <laughs> <laughs> but, buddy, I have a swimming pool and a place in the country with horses. You hear that? Uncle Tom's no fool. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, people marry because they care for each other. Well, I'm not saying that's why he's marrying her. <laughs> no one said he is marrying me. <laughs> well, that seems to be the general opinion. What do you think, Mr. Berg? Get it off your chest, son. Then you can enjoy your chicken. Huh? <laughs> Why think you're mean? Uh, don't, uh, don't you think we're mean, Mr. Burke? Nature have gone completely haywire. 
You can take my word for it, Sam. They're kissing. 